welcome back. Let me introduce you to our newest acquisition, a hay wagon. Now you've probably seen us in the past using this hay loader into the back of an old Ford pickup truck. But now that we've been able to find this, a Ward's low load from the early 1900s that we found at a town about half an hour away, we are looking forward to a much more period correct and hopefully easy to use way to get hay from the field to the barn. This is Cozy Cow Farm, where we're stuck in the 1940s and loving it. They all roll, that's good. this wagon needs a lot of love. But before we can get into the reconstruction, we gotta do some deconstruction. We are going to make We've got this pretty well stripped down and some of the really ugly farm fixes are starting to show huge weld repairs and patches of metal that probably didn't used to be there. And of course I'd like to really take this apart to do it the best I can, but there are some parts that are not going to move. These tie rods for one are really stuck in place and I don't think will ever be adjustable again. These nuts are not moving at all. And the main pole that joins the front and the back axles is so bent in the middle that there's no way I can slide it out anymore. These upright holders should unbolt, but most hey, of them Lola. have been welded on. These great hubcaps with the original logo cleaned up really nicely. Unfortunately, there were only three of them, and the fourth appears to be replaced with what might be an old tin can lid. So we're gonna pry this out. And it looks a little dry and crunchy inside. Hopefully it hasn't worn down too much. But while we're here, it's a great discovery of the original colors. Underneath all the grease, when we scrape this away, it appears that originally the wheel was all a red or a red orange. Well, the bottom side of the frame shows some of the original greenish blue color. I've gone both ways with restorations, trying to make it look exactly like it would have originally looked. But since a lot of this wagon bed would have been built by the farmer, in the own style that they wanted, I'm not too worried about containing exact originality. Instead, we're going to change over to a dark green frame with cream wheels, which is similar to the only other picture of these that I've seen anywhere online. Since there's not a lot of metal, I'm trying to take the time to really get this prepped well. And that means I'm attacking it with a sandblaster, needle scaler, flap wheel disc, and a wire wheel. Then when we've got some good metal showing, We'll shoot the whole thing with Cora Seal, which is a rust converter primer base. So what does it take to get a wheel from this rusty to prepped for that Cora Seal? Right now, it's about an hour and a half every evening after I get home from work. First, we'll work around the hub with that needle scaler. Then we're going to sandblast it, since I can't get much else in among the spokes. Then we'll go around every single spoke as much on all sides as we can with a flap wheel and work around the hub and the outside of the wheel. And it will use up an entire flap wheel on every wheel. And yes, I know after all this work, that paint is just going to wear off of the wheel surface again, but it'll look really good for the first 50 feet. One of the only mechanical things we're gonna have in here is these huge bearings. So we're going to go ahead and pull them out, clean up to make sure we get all the metal flakes out and all the old hard grease out of there and repack them and put them back in. These bearings, come out pretty gross, full of crunchy hard grease with a lot of metal filings in there as well. So we're just going to soak them in this extremely safe, definitely not flammable solvent that is for sure not gasoline for all you YouTube commenters out there. And after a little while, they'll come out looking like this. Two huge bearings per axle and they look like they're in great shape. I have confidence that with a good fresh packing of grease, these will hold up for a long time to come. This huge tongue is obviously homemade, but I just can't quite bear how rigged up it looks. So I'm gonna weld this shut and try to smooth the box over a little bit.
grinding out the inside of the back of an old winch case. Well, it just so happens that it is similar sort of in appearance, but almost identically sized to my old hubcap. So it won't look lovely, but I think it'll be passable and should do good enough. that these holes for the pins for the axles were really ovaled out. So I'm welding those back to their normal shape. I really wish I had thought of that before I painted. This is actually quite a clever little setup. This main pipe has three different settings so that you can easily adjust the length of the wagon with a drop of a single pin. In this case, we'll be building the deck at full length. So we're gonna bring it back. Right now, lumber is pretty expensive, and these 2x12s that were the main runners for the frame are in decent shape. They're just weathered and ugly. So we're reclaiming them and then just taking a pass with a belt sander to get a smoother, nicer finish that we can stain. It's 9.30 at night. Well, going on 10 now. Uh, so I got home from work, dealt with problems with our well water pump, ate dinner, put the kids in bed, and now we're out here to get some work done on this. And I just wasted about half my time trying to get it backed in here in the first place. So, let's get to work. Okay, so what's happening? Well, at the front end, we can see evidence where those wheels have been rubbing the frame quite a long time. My wife had a good idea of let's just pinch the front frame rails in a little bit with some spacers. At the back, we'll leave it fairly loosely floating so that as the undercarriage goes over uneven ground, the bed won't be really torquing and twisting on it. Yeah, skunk just sprayed something nearby. Hope it's not my dog, again. for hay with a hay loader hooked up to it. So we're making sure we know exactly where the back of that deck can go without bumping into that hay loader and without the front of the deck can go without bumping into our tires. during a great lumber price surge of 2021. But we've managed to source out some pretty affordable lumber at a dollar a board foot for rough cut two by six by 16s. And our total cost for lumber for this whole project is somewhere around $300. Well, I miscalculated the boards I needed, embarrassingly. So we're breaking into the stock that's in the barn loft of our extra old lumber. And here's a reminder why projects take so long. I just pulled the scrap boards out of the barn, but I want to pressure wash them so that they look like the ones that are already on there. But of course the pressure hose nozzle is clogged, so now I'm taking that apart. And a three hour project turns into a four hour project. I'm gonna make some pockets to hold up the racks. I'd like the hay racks to be removable. So I just need something that the two x four can slide down into and that won't rock around. I'll show you how we're doing that on the front one. I've already marked out with chalk about the size and the depth in from the end that I need to cut out my first pocket on the surface board. Now it comes to the real structural support, which is all underneath. We're going to build a cross piece that goes in behind, and then it's all getting sandwiched in with a large piece here, which is screwed in both to the main frame down here. Plus this will get screwed in through the top decking, sideways into that back piece, and through the front over here too. 
And of course, since the mainframe is finished lumber and my verticals are going to be rough cut, I've got to trim out a little bit of recess on the side support as well. Got a pretty good load on, and now we pull away from the hay loader and hope that it doesn't all slide off the back. There we go. So we found with a hay wagon that you have to go a little bit slower than with the truck. I have to be a lot more careful about my placement. But first we were finding that the loads were certainly no better than what we were able to pull in with a truck. Now I'm finally learning to place my piles quite a bit better. And we're kind of cheating with adding some ropes along the edges here just to help firm up those sides so they don't tend to fall off. Just remember to take off the ropes before unloading or else this happens. We certainly can't upsize our slings because they're at about the max for what will fit through that loft. So I thought that the deck was going to be way too large, but I'm finding that maybe it was just about right. But it gives me just enough room to stack right and catch a little bit that might start to slide. Now that I get better at stacking, we find that our loads are much larger than what we could pick up in the truck. And there's much less strain up the hay trolley because it's not trying to force it out of the truck bed. Our hay trolley continued to amaze us as it managed to unload the wagon in just two pulls. This wagon load was about the max though. Any more and we really should go with three slings. And though a little less comfortable, this little four cylinder is much better for fuel usage than that big 460. So what do I mean by stacking it? Well, again, I'm still figuring it out, but generally we're gonna lay our large hay clumps slightly to the side. The true edge of the pile is about here. Next foot and a half or two feet are kind of overflow. Hay is quite wide, so really that side is just shifting it slightly offset from each other. Then we'll go ahead and fill in the top center, which will help push it all together and keep it on the wagon, hopefully, while we head back up the hill. years after it was made, this wagon is back in the field with basically the entire original running gear. It's only a redecking and minor cosmetic restoration, and it's performing great doing what it was always meant to do. So overall, yeah, I'm really pleased with how this turned out. And would I do it again? Absolutely. We've learned a lot over the last couple years working our mid-century hobby farm. We've grown, and so has our herd and flock. But we still try to affordably increase our self-reliance while ensuring we and the kids are having fun. Every day we find there is still more to learn. So subscribe to join us on the journey.